Welcome back to the Fearless Future podcast. We're your hosts, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. Today is an exciting day for our country. We were up late last night and uh, Donald Trump won the presidential vote by a landslide. Yeah. No, and, no question about it. And today we're going to dive into why that's good for us as business owners. Now, and investors. A lot of people have you know strong opinions. Obviously, a lot more than half of the country have an opinion that's positive or pro Donald Trump. There's a lot of people that still are very negative and people online that are very upset today. But regardless of how you feel about that, we want to dive in today to why we know from, from prior experience that as business owners, as real estate investors, this is a really good thing for us economically and policy-wise for the country. So yes. we'll dive into that today. Let's do it. So I don't know about you. I know that one thing I remember really well about the 2016 era is that, you know, we were a different country. Yeah. Like financially speaking, business was in a great spot. We had a lot less regulations on things. Yep. And there was a lot less I felt like hatred in the country back then, but I don't want to get down that path too far. But there was—I well, think there was plenty of hatred still yeah, in the country was. as there, far as that goes. But it, but as far as the other stuff you're saying, yeah, I would definitely I agree think, with I think, that. Why, why, yeah, hatred's the wrong word. The, think, you know, the last the last eight years have just been such a divide. Yeah. Uh, well, the first the first four years of Trump being in office, you know, I have the experience of I've been a supporter of him for years. Don't always like the the craziness that goes along with it, but I've been a supporter because I. I saw Trump speak at an Anthony Robbins personal power event back in Jersey, I think back in the mid 90s, like 95. Mm -hmm. And it was a, he was on stage with obviously Anthony Robbins um, was there. Barbara Walters was there. General Norman Schwarzkopf was there. Do you, please tell me you, you know I these do, names. Yes. All right, you know these names. You're not that much older than I me. I know. You're kind of looking at me like a deer in the headlights. So. Uh, Brian Tracy was there, a guy named, um, oh, there was a, a very famous, uh, Sandy, Sandy, uh, it was a tax guy. He would look, he would look, so he's talking about how to, how to, he was a IR, former IRS guy, how to really save money on taxes. And so, and then Donald Trump spoke and then other speakers were there too. So I got to see Donald Trump there. So when, when the talk started to happen about him becoming president, which happened on Oprah, gosh, two decades ago, yeah. when they started talking, people said, what do you think? I said, I would love to see a businessman run the country. Yeah. I don't want to see another politician. I want to see a, who's never actually been in the arena like we are as business owners. They never actually know what really goes on in the arena because right. they live in... It's fantasy land being a politician. It's not. Yeah, everything you, is quid pro quo and, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And you have and, limitless money too. Right. Yeah. There's really not struggle because there's no, there's limited, there's limitless money. Right. And all that. So I always wanted to see that. So people have said, well, what do you want? What would you like to see him president? I said, I would. So, and I enjoyed those four years. And then when, when he got um, whooped in 2020, you know, it, and then he was mad and it, just, it turned into this whole thing. And so the last yeah, four then, years. Then it was a bunch of kids throwing sand in the sandbox. Yeah. And the last four years have just been a, a whole, you know, like, let's try and get them out. Let's, uh, so all that really, yeah. that all hurt business. Like when they, when they, when the government's so focused on getting somebody out that they do everything in their power, they're not focused on actually making the country better. And slowly but surely it got away from us. Yeah. And, and what happens during that kind of time is there's so much uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, people tend to go in fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah. And so, you know, the people are holding on tighter to their money and things are more expensive the, the last four years. Things have just dramatically yeah. gone out of control yeah. as far as price goes, you, yeah. you know. So, so I think if nothing else, if we can get back to a level of certainty to kind of have a direction with which way the country's going and yeah. the economy's going, I think that's really going to help people. I think that, you know, there's a lot of things I want to talk about today. One, one is red tape. And I think that the, one of the things that I remember from 2016 and that I know he has promised to do again, and by the way, made a lot of promises. Now I got to deliver on those promises, right. right? So, and again, if we can get that done and we have the, you know, the, the House and the Senate, we have, if they, that all can come together and we can all work together, we can get a lot of things done yeah. to help our our country as a whole. Yeah, I actually saw a comment um, on Fox this morning about that. And it was like, even when he was president last time, he was still had a lot of blockades because of the, sure. the Senate and all that. And yeah. now- he should just be able to. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's the case. So yeah. less red tape. So again, you can remove a lot more red tape when you are all on the same page and the House and the Senate is voting in your favor, hopefully. And, and it's, you know, obviously has to make economic sense. But I think with Trump in, we're going to find that we're going to have a lot. We're going to we're going to focus on deregulation, meaning get the government's hands out of things. Now, look, at, I'm going to tell you, I am not a political analyst. I don't know exactly all that they do. 
I'm a layman at best. Yeah, we're, we're big picture thinkers. Yes. So I don't know all the policy and what they have to do, but I think that, you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to ease building and zoning regulations that'll trickle down through and it'll get to states and it'll get yeah. to certain areas. So I think that'll help a lot with that deregulation and it could really increase housing supply and make it easier to develop new properties. Those are things that can, that will really start to happen. Right. So I think that that, that alone will help. And the fact that he's a real estate investor, that's what people say, well, you know, who, who are you supporting? I'm like, look, we're part of two big masterminds, probably the two largest real estate masterminds in the, country. in the country. And so because of that, I can tell you that 99% of that room is conservative and votes on the red side of the ticket. Because we understand that we're capitalists. Right? And we, we vote with our pocketbooks. We do. Yeah. Well, and, and, of, yes. and, you know, it, the values have to align too. Of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, we don't just vote for somebody because whatever. So, um, I think that, you know, I think that when we have tax cuts, so last time Trump was in those tax cuts and that, that boosts, like you said, when there's tax cuts, people have certainty. Yes. And more money, more money. And when they have more money, they spend it, they spend it. And when they spend it, that helps the economy. Yes. And that stirs the economy up. And then that, that is better for everybody. That means they're buying houses. They're doing a lot of things. And so that I think will help a lot. I think tax cuts too. When people start spending money, it, it should loosen up. Now, is one man really in charge of no. reducing the interest rate? No, it's definitely a bigger picture. <laughs> it's a big picture thing. So I, I think that we have to be very careful, assuming that one guy in is going to change everything. But, but he can stir the pot and get things in the right direction. Yes. Do I think? You know, do we think the interest rates will ever go back to the two percent range, the COVID rates? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> no, I sure hope so. And I know, I know for me. We would do a lot of things differently if oh, it yeah. ever got down that low again. Yes. We did not make some moves we should have made. Strategically, yes. Strategically. We, our rental portfolio, we should have refinanced. We had a lot, a lot of um, what's called adjustable rate mortgages inside. That's a typical way to finance a rental portfolio is a five-year or a 10-year adjustable. And so we had notes like that, and I didn't want to spend the money to refinance. Never really thought about it. Like I should have. And they so, come due and then the interest rates are higher. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. So had we locked into a three or 4% rate, that would have been a lot better. Now, there's talk of the fact that maybe in a year from now, interest rates will be back down in that four or 5% range. That would allow a lot more people to buy houses. There's not that many houses that creates demand. That means the property values go up. That means people's wealth goes up and on and on we go. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see if, we'll see if when they're in, if everything they do can change. Yeah. Everything. That's not going to happen overnight. No, but over the next few months to the next year or so that could, we could definitely start seeing changes in the right direction. I think the next thing we're going to talk about is market optimism. You started talking about it before. Yeah. I think that the, the people have spoken, right? There was, you know, five plus million more popular votes. First time that's happened since I yeah. think uh, 94, 80, 2004, whatever it was. And so it's been a long time since we've won the, you know, popular vote and the electoral vote, but the market spoke because this morning, the New York Stock Exchange was up by 3% in yeah. a day. People Huge. people had six-figure gains when they woke up this morning. That changes yeah. the the market optimism. Yeah, and you know, things that maybe people had held off on buying or spending money on, all of a sudden they feel confident and and okay to do that because they have more money in their pocket for one. Yeah. But also because of that level of optimism and certainty, they they feel comfortable doing it. Well, I think that they too, you know, I think they feel People feel better because we we had a financial experience with Trump as president 2016, 2020. Right. right. So we knew we know what that's gonna be like. Right. And so with with uh, the you know, Kamala, they had no idea. Well, actually we knew what that was gonna be like too, because right. it felt like it felt like all we were doing was extending the Joe Biden presidency. So right. it felt like that's all we were doing. So we're like, okay, we can stay the path, which we're all losing money and people aren't, people aren't making a lot of money and it's crazy expensive out here and the policies are crazy. Or we can go back to a guy that yells a lot and says a lot of things that are very New York-ish and, uh, and maybe not the most polished politician in the world, but we know what, we know what the economic yeah. certainty is going to be. You know what to expect. You know what to expect. And the, and the market spoke to that big time this morning. And I think that market optimism is going to be going to be huge for us as real estate investors and for any business owner that you're there, because if people are spending money, they're going to spend money in your business. Yep. And then you can spend, you can hire more employees and you can grow your business. And the more we have that, 
that certainty, the more we're going to do that. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of great things. Yeah, happen, when, so. when that deregulation and tax cuts, they keep more money in consumers' pockets, and then, like you said, people keep spending it. Like, like I, I bet, I bet this Christmas it's going to be a lot better for all of the people that are selling stuff because people are going to be feel okay spending. Yeah. yeah. Because they feel like they know what's going to happen. Right. Now, we don't know what's going to happen, but we feel like we know what's going to happen. Right. There's a level of certainty. There is. A there level is. of expectation. Trump has been really big on talking about some things. One is tariffs. He's talked a lot about yeah. tariffs right now. And, and uh, you know, I'm not so sure that putting tariffs on things. And again, I, what I heard, again, I'm not an economic. Uh, You're not a macroeconomic. Uh, no, I'm not. not that's, that's not, not, why that's, I not you. that's not That's uh, not not what I do, <laughs> nor am I a political uh, uh, guru. but. I know that if we put tariffs on things that are being shipped into our country, it could really impact cost of building houses right. and the cost of building goods. Right. And so it's just something to keep an eye on. Right? If we make, it makes it that much more expensive, then housing will be more expensive to build. The margins could be tighter. So that's just something I think we should think about when you're looking at in the construction industry. But even with that, you know, there's always innovations that come along as well. You know, if, if there are these tariffs that are putting on, on stuff that's coming from overseas and that makes them cost more, you know, maybe that's when somebody here in the United States comes up with something more creative. I mean, I've, I've already seen some building materials that are, you know, they're doing 3D houses now. They're doing, that's true. Um, you know, there, there's all these different different creations. I think Elon Musk even came out with this new RV that's like $30,000, which kind of like almost doubles as like a tiny house. Like, uh -huh. that, and I'm not saying that's the solution or the answer, but my point is that- You want to sell our home on the beach and no, live in a little no, tiny motorhome? No, I don't. Motor home? Um, <clears throat> You get your own. I'll get my own. Okay. Yeah, great. So uh, that's that's what we've come to. <laughs> no, no, the point is that there's innovation that happens. Like like one thing, one thing might temporarily put a halt on something if these tariffs do make things more expensive, but that makes other people get more creative and innovate. And that's then true. maybe stuff is made more in the United States, and then that helps the economy because yeah. there's more stuff happening here. Just throwing it out there. No, it's interesting. I think that one of the reasons he's going to use the tariffs to do two things that I heard was one is going to going to remove the uh, overtime tax. Mm -hmm. So if you have overtime pay, yep. you don't get, you don't get, I don't know if he means the whole tax or just the, just the insane extra tax you get on overtime pay. So I don't know. I don't, again, there's details yeah. that have and, been left out there and tips and people's tips. Yeah. So anybody in, in the, the service, in the industry. service, which isn't that anybody now? I mean, you go to the, you go to any store in the world, just go to grocery store. They want to tip you. Right. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like even, even <laughs> when know. you go somewhere where they're not really serving you, like I, I, I go to Smoothie King, for example, and get, yeah. get, you know, an acai bowl or shakes for the kids or whatever. Yeah. And it's just right there on the register when you do your credit card. Yeah. You get like, five bucks ten... for a tip. Like, what am I talking about? Everybody wants a tip. So like all you did was give it to me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Didn't deserve a tip for that. But anyway, but again, if I think the tariffs, the, the design was, that was what the talk was. Now, again, you got to prove it. Right. So now you said these things. Now it's important to deliver and yeah. prove on these things because that's what, that's how you build trust, trust and confidence yeah. in your constituents. And people say, okay, I voted for you. And, and not just for you as an individual, like, like, but as a party, yeah. you know, because I don't think Donald Trump just wants to like come in for these next four years. Like this needs to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. You know, he needs, he needs to represent. Yeah, he does. And I think I think it's important that we, he brings the country together. I think the way you do that is through money, through economics. I mean, yeah. I know I know that we're never going to agree with the left on policies for, um, you know, women and men and women's sports and all right. that, all the crazy stuff that's going on. We're, we're never going to agree on on those things. But what, the one thing we can agree on is everybody would like to have a better living and save for a better future and leave a legacy for their family. That's that's the number one thing I think we can all come we together on. We want a on. peaceful country. We want a prosperous country. We want a healthy country. Yeah. It was, and it, people put different values on different or put different, different, uh, yeah, different values on their own values. So right. they'll, they voted based on what was important to them. If, abor if abortion was important to you, they yeah. prioritize that over economic certainty. Right. Right. So we, as capitalists and as business owners, we do that. The investor sentiment out there, again, we, it's our, the market has spoken in, on the stock market. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch it speak in the real estate world. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen as fast in real estate because it's, it's not. It's a big ship to turn. It is. Yeah. And so. It's and it is already and we know from experience that the real estate market is very strong. I mean, around the country, people are still buying houses. There's there's a tremendous amount of houses that are we have an inventory problem. Right. Right. So so there's not enough houses. So we have a supply and demand thing happening right there. And so that the as a real estate investor, it will only get likely better for us in time. And I would recommend everybody start getting their hands on some real estate, whatever you well, can. Well, yeah, I mean. There was, um, again, you know, I aren't economists, but um, I, Kamala was wanting to put um, 
all those extra taxes on capital if, gains, capital gains. Yeah, on, that yes. un, unrealized capital gains. Right. Now, there, there were some stipulations like that was only for the uber wealthy. You had to make 400,000 a year or, or whatever it was. You had to be worth a couple million. But nonetheless, that's a Which lot of that people. Which can happen pretty easily in real estate. <clears throat> yes. That happens pretty quickly in real estate. We know. And so all of a sudden, yeah, they, that was one of the policies that I think investors said, you're not going to do no. that to me. No, yeah. because what, what they were saying with that policy, again, we never really knew exactly what our policies were, but, but the one thing when we heard that, everybody went, what are you insane? Yeah. Because she said, what she's saying is, if you have money in the stock market and you don't cash it out, like for instance, let's just say for instance, today. Somebody woke up this morning and made $100,000 today because the market spiked 3% today. Mm -hmm. Well, if that person had to pay capital gains of, let's say, 25%, they would owe $25,000 even though they didn't take the money out today. Right. Now, they might do that annually or quarterly, but that is insane. Yeah. I'm going to pay money to you, so I have to go take a loan or sell off my asset, which means I'm going to take money out of another company. So if I'm investing in a company on the stock market and you say, all right, Amber, you made $100,000 this year because that stock went up. You say, yeah, I didn't cash it, though. It's still sitting there. It's still funding that company, General Electric, Apple, uh, Facebook, or Meta, whatever it might be. You're fueling these stocks that you buy, so you're helping that company. And all of a sudden, if everybody has to start selling off stock to pay their taxes, that's insanity. Mm -hmm. Like that's okay. So now I'm taking money out of an American company because I had to pay taxes to the American government. Give me a break. Stop yeah. taking our money. And that's the kind of things that I think investors spoke to when they were voting. Yeah. They said, I, this is not going to happen on my watch. You're not going to take money that I haven't even cashed out. Yeah, because on even yet. if you're not a real estate investor, you might invest in the stock market and nobody wanted to see that. Again, if you put <clears> your <throat> economic glasses on voting, which I think, I think America did in a lot of ways, America's like, we're going to go back to some values here. Yeah. We're going to go back to some basic core principles. We've gotten way down a path with the left that's they're We're voting for things that don't really, that, that are going to hurt us right. in the long run as a country. And we can't, you know, we always say in business, right, that sales fixes everything. Mm -hmm. If you're in business and you're, you're struggling through, then sales fixes everything. Because when you bring more sales and you have more revenue, more revenue fixes things. And it's the same thing true in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we are having economic decline, then people fight about nothing, right? If they fight, they get upset, they're angry, the, the sentiment is not great. But when people are on the economic rise, like we were 2016, 17, 18, 19, some of 20 until COVID hit, Everybody feels a little different. Right. Everybody's a little happier, a little more at dinner, a little more with the appetizers, a little more right. with the, hey, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that. And that stirs the economy and away we go. So right. I do want to talk about, from a marketing standpoint, as we wrap this up today, about perseverance. Yeah. And I think, again, when I went to that event that Donald Trump spoke at back in the, whenever that was, in the 90s, early 90s. He was selling his book, The Art of the Deal. That was, a, I think that was his first book, The Art of the Deal. He was marketing himself back then. He was on Oprah back then as a real estate investor, right? So he was always, he's always been marketing. He is, whether you like him or not, he's an incredible You got to give him credit for that. <laughs> he has, he has yeah. managed to market himself in the face of half of the country hating him so bad that people have tried to kill him. Twice. Twice. And that's just the that two. That we know of. Right. That's just the two that we know of. But that's how bad their hatred, half of, well, now less, less than, than half, half yeah. of the country. Still, that's a lot of people. It is. I'm sure some people voted for him, but probably don't like him. Yeah. But, but you had to respect his perseverance. and his, So his marketing was strong, right? His, his, he's always been a master marketer. If you want to have a class in marketing, like an absolutely first, class, or first front row seat to a marketing, go back and track his record. Back yeah. before he was anybody, he was always somebody. Yeah. In his mind, he's always been somebody. And again, whether you like him, whether you call him a narcissist, whatever it is, he's always marketed his brand, his house or his houses, his buildings say Trump on them. Mm -hmm. So his buildings are, are, he started marketing himself there and made himself unbelievably popular. Famous. He's, yeah. he's arguably the most famous person in the world right now. Oh, I, I think he is. Yeah. No question. It's all, yeah, yeah, worldwide. So all that being said, as a business owner, we can learn lessons. One, if you're not marketing yourself, and he was marketing himself before social media was ever a thing. Right. Now everybody wants to be a marketer. And we even right. we struggle with that, right? We struggle with going out there and being marketers for ourselves. What's that story you told me about? Um, we were talking about it the other day. He was walking down the street with a, a model 
and he saw a homeless oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Let, let's so, talk about that story. So he, ta- he told that story on Oprah. So he was walking down the street. Yeah, he had a beautiful woman on his arm. It was a model that he was dating. He, had, he never lacked for a beautiful woman on his side, that's for sure. And so he was walking down the street. And at that time, he was $900, $900 million in debt. So he was $900 million in debt, and it just went bankrupt. I think he, if I have my story correct, he just went bankrupt. So $900 million in debt just went bankrupt. And so he has to rebuild from $900 million that he lost. And he walked by a homeless person that was on the street, and he looked down, and he looked at the girl and said, you know what? That guy right there, she goes, what do you see? He goes, she goes, I, I see a, a man that's really struggling. I feel bad for him. He said, me too. He said, but you know what he has that I don't have? He is $900 million richer than I am. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. But that he made, that shows how down and out he was and how he persevered and conquered that. And and that's not to say that that most people would ever be in that situation, but it speaks to how strong his resolve was and his, that he persevered through persecution. Like literally, he's oh, been yeah. persecuted and demonized and attacked and, you know, called all sorts of names under the book and, yeah, you know, the, taken the, into, the taken into court. The latest one is Hitler. His, and, his kids got to watch him being called Hitler right, right. now on the on t- yeah, You know, he's been, been prosecuted crazy. and, oh. you know, death, at, you know, <laughs> it's amazing how much he's overcome and he yeah. still stands up and says, fight, fight, fight. After, after he got shot. After he got shot. He took a bullet in the ear bleeding. He's like, fight. fight. I remember seeing that going, you got to be kidding me. And again, most people aren't going to have to ever experience that level of, of hardship, but you do have to fight for what you want in life. And you, you have to, you know, you don't, I guess you don't have to, but it, it depends on what if kind of want, life you want to have. If you want to get it. If you want to get it, you have to fight for it. And if you get knocked down, you have to get back up and you have to not, ever yeah. let something hold you down because he is the definition of perseverance. And that is how to quote Rocky, that's how winning is done. Yeah. That's how winning is done. You 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 have to get up one more time than you get knocked down. And I think he has been the absolute picture of that. Again, whether you like him or not, if you're, if you're listening to this now and your blood is boiling, I would ask you just to take back your personal emotions of yeah, don't him. take this personally and look at look at the big picture. Because as a business owner you're going to get knocked on your butt. Yeah. We know. We get knocked on our butts on a regular basis. And if you don't learn how to get up when you've been knocked down, and I think the bigger the goal, the, the more, more you're going to get, get knocked, knocked down. down. Sure. And the harder you'll be knocked yeah. down. His goal was to be the leader of the free world again after he was thrown out, arrested a bunch of times, and all the stuff that they- Had to the, miss his son's the, graduation because oh, he was in court. All the stuff I mean, they did to him was insane. And, it was, it, we, and I think the country, even even- People in my family who I know are liberal going, yeah, it's kind of crazy right yeah. now. Like this is this this looks bad. Mm-hmm. But but the what I want to close with is that if you're going to be a business owner, you have got to show that kind of determination. And the larger the goal, the larger the determination you're going to have to have. Would you so, agree? So fight, fight, fight. You're going to have what to you fight want. for everything. So I know that I for one am glad that he is back in the office. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens this from an economic standpoint. Yeah. I know some people will will give hate comments on here and you can certainly of you but listen, we're in a country. That's what I love about our country. You can have your opinion and I think it's better that one side isn't in charge for too long. Yeah. I think it's important to have that balance of power and I think now we're going to see what we can actually do, but Mr. Trump, you've been elected in. Now it's time to deliver on those promises cuz a lot of us supported you so off we go. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. If you liked what you heard, make sure you click that like button and then also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything new coming out.